Hello, super user. Do you ever have anything that you do constantly in Finale? Any repeated tasks that are the exact same thing? Well, it turns out there's an easy way to eliminate most repetitive tasks in Finale, which is great, because after all, you're here to make good stuff, and the less you can repeat things, the better and faster you'll work. We're gonna use a program called Keyboard Maestro. It only works on Mac, but there's an equivalent for PCs called Auto Hotkey. And this is going to allow us to create macros that we can just call with a simple keyboard shortcut and we'll be able to do any series of complex tasks for us without us having to go through each task step by step. So this is the website. This is Keyboard Maestro. You can download it down here for free. There's a trial that I think lasts for about 30 days. After that, you have to purchase a license. But the license is decently cheap. I believe it's only like $36 for the lifetime. So if you're a heavy finale user or a heavy computer user for that matter, this is, I think, a really good deal because these macros can work for any application and they're not specific to finale. So today I'm going to walk through step by step a very simple macro so you can get used to the environment and creating macros in it without having to learn it all yourself. So here's what Keyboard Maestro looks like. This is going to be the macro we're going to recreate. I know it looks long, but it's actually really simple process once you get used to it. And we're also going to create a second one right here. It's basically the exact same thing. Uh, they do the exact opposites. The only difference is instead of 0 0.05 here, it says negative 0 0.05. And so let me show you what it's going to do. So I'm going to come over to my document and we are just going to start adding some crescendos, decrescendos. Let's make it nice and terrible looking. Add some dynamics in here. I don't know. Uh, yeah, sure. That works. So it's all messed up. Uh, these macros are simply going to align and move the dynamics. It uses the TG Tools plugin, but it works like that. And you can just move the dynamics up or down. So, like for instance, let's say they were all aligned, but they're conflicting with notes. You could just, with keystrokes, move it down so you don't ever have to worry about manually adjusting the dynamics. You can just do them all at the same time. So that's what the end result is, and let's dive in. We're gonna start with moving dynamics up, and I'm gonna disable this macro and recreate it that way you can see what I'm doing from scratch. So I'm just gonna create a new macro, that's command N. You can also hit this plus button down here, and we're gonna call this move dynamics up two, because it's the second one. New trigger, we're going to do a hotkey trigger, and I like Option Shift S, um, but really it can be any hotkey you wish. Now we're going to add actions, and as we add these actions, I'm going to start off by doing the very simple things of what it does, and then show you my thought process for how to make the macros more user-proof. And so we're going to do new action. You can also get to this menu by hitting Command K up here in the search box we're going to type in menu and select or show a menu item. You can either double click it or drag it off here. We're going to do front application because it's whenever finale is at front. We're going to do menu, finale, and we're going to go down here to plugins, TG tools, align and move dynamics. Now what this will do is it'll open up the plugins, TG tools, align and move dynamics menu, just like that. So if you want to actually test this out, we just do our hotkey. And as you can see, what it did is it just opened up that menu. Next, we want to have it type in here, negative 0 0.05. That way we can move it down. And then we want it to hit go. Right, so the general process is once we do the trigger, oh, sorry, we want to do 0 0.05 and we want it to hit go. So then after this, coming back up to our finding menu, we're gonna hit type and we wanna insert text by typing 0 0.05 and then we want it to press the button and we want it to be labeled go. I believe it's lowercase. And so now if we run the macro, it presses the button and go. Now obviously after every time we want to close the menu, so I'm just going to duplicate this, Command D, and hit Close. So that way, whenever we press it up, it'll automatically close the menu for us. And so, let's just make sure that it's working. 
Yes, it is. It's pressing it up. You can see it typing 0 0.05 very briefly, hitting go, and then it moves them up. And you can create uh, the equivalent by just doing negative 0 0.05, and it will start moving it down like that. Um, and one thing you have noticed about Keyboard Maestro is that there's no saving. It saves automatically. And so whenever you do something, you can immediately test it and not worry about anything changing. Uh, so that's that. Now you may have noticed that in the original move up, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff here. That has to do with finale and measurement units. So if you notice here, I'm just going to do this manually, TG Tools Align and Move Dynamics, it already has it displayed as inches. So it's basically thinking, oh, we want 0 0.05 inches. But Finale doesn't just have inches. If you go up here to the measurement units, they actually have a bunch of other units you can choose from. And so if you have picas, and we go up here to TG Tools, Online and Move Dynamics, you'll see that it says picas. And so we have to account for the different units in case you're working in one unit, but still want to move up 0 0.05 inches. And so that's where all the other stuff comes in. And so with that, we're going to have to do a couple new tricks. So we're going to work with variables. So I'm going to come up here and set variable to text. We're going to set it a name and we're going to just call it units. And we're going to type all the units in here. So what this will do is we can call back the units variable later on and access all the finale units. Instead of just typing in all the units, uh, I'm just going to copy it for laziness. And we want them to be on separate lines, and we only want the lines for the units. Next, we're going to make a for loop, a for each loop like that. And we're going to call this for each unit in the collection, lines in collection, for lines in variable. And we want the variables, we want it to be, we want it to be units like that. Uh, we don't want it to include blank lines, so blank lines means if you want like that, it wouldn't lo loop for each of those. Next, in this condition, we want to insert an if statement. So one of the things you'll notice about Keyboard Meister is that there's a lot of logic built into this. So you can actually develop very complex things very simply. Uh, and if you have any sort of computing background, this will make more sense. But even if you don't, this will get easier to use over time. So inside this for loop, basically what the for loop is going to do is it's going to loop through every single one of these units. So first we're going to check EVPUs, then inches, then centimeters, then points, etc. And then we have an if statement. So if this condition is true, then we're going to do something. So we're going to say if this menu, and we want a menu condition here. This and we want it to be unit. Why unit? Because we want to see if the unit, this thing, so we want to see if the menu item with this name is marked. The percent sign simply say get the value of unit and not the text unit. And so what this is doing, if we go back to the finale, is it's basically going to loop through these measurement unit things and see which one of them has that check mark. Because the process is, we're going to say whichever one has the check mark, we're going to change the units to inches, and then afterwards, recheck the original one. That way, as a user, you don't have to worry about the units are suddenly changing on me. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to define another variable. Oh, that's terrible spelling. Variable to text. And then we're going to call this original unit. The text, we're going to say it's unit. Again, using the percent sign, so that way it actually takes the value of unit in here. So for instance, if it's already on centimeters, the unit will be centimeters, is what we're going to assign the text to be. If you want an else statement, like if you want to say, OK, if this is not true, do something else instead, you can add something in here. Um, we don't need that for now. Next, we're going to do a menu condition. And we're going to drag this in here. Because now that we have the original unit saved, we want to go over to inches to actually run the plugin. So, finale, finale, 
measurement units inches. Nice and simple. And then at the very end, we want to revert it back to the original one. And so we're going to do original unit. Now again with the pre now again with the percent signs because we want it to be the actual value of unit and not just or the actual value of original unit and not just the string original unit. That's how you get started with Keyboard Maestro. Uh, there's a lot of other scripts as you saw that I have and I'll be showing you them in the future. If it is already the future, there's a link to a playlist with all the Keyboard Maestro scripts that I have. So make sure to check this out. And if you found this video at all helpful, make sure to like and subscribe such that you can stay up to date with all the finale tips and tricks.